Hello AP Chem, this is Mrs. Sargent and this is section 13.5 in your textbook. Hopefully you've had a chance to take a look at the reaction quotient Pogel, um, but if you haven't we will talk about um, some of the concepts that you should have discovered with that Pogel. So the application of the equilibrium constant. When you're working with equilibrium problems, it's not always obvious which direction the equilibrium is going to shift. So remember, we've been talking about um, that now our reactions can proceed either in the forward or the reverse direction. And so sometimes it's obvious if you um, start with no products and only reactants that you are going to proceed in the forward direction to form products. Um, but it might not always be so um, easy to determine. So this is how we're going to figure it out. Uh, so obviously, like I said, if the initial concentration of the products is zero, then your reaction will shift to form products. So it'll go in the forward direction. However, if there are reactants and products present in the reaction, you must solve for the reaction quotient to determine which direction the reaction will shift um, in order to obtain equilibrium. So Q is the reaction quotient. It is calculated like K, but using the initial concentrations instead of the equilibrium concentrations. So when you go to calculate Q, Q is going to be the concentration of the products initially, so like what you start the reaction with, divided by the concentration of your reactants initially. So it's just the numbers that you're plugging in are going to be different than the concentrations at equilibrium. If Q is, or if K is equal to Q, then the system is at equilibrium. And that means that there's going to be no shift that occurs. So one thing about the Pogel is in model two, it had you compare Q and K, and it had Q versus KEQ. Um, if you flip um, your values and you do, K, you look at K versus Q, this will help you determine which direction the reaction will proceed. So if K value, um, your equilibrium K it constant is less than your Q value um, for the reaction quotient, then what that means is that your product to reactant ratio is too large and your system will shift to the left. So the reason for doing K versus Q is you can see that this um, less than sign is pointing in the direction of the left and the react the way that the reaction will proceed. Um, if K is greater than Q, that means that the product to reaction ratio is too small and that the system shifts to the right. And so we're going to go to the right, like so. Um, so sometimes left and right are a bit confusing um, because they're, they also discuss will the reaction proceed in the forward or the reverse reaction. So if we're going to the left, this is going to uh, shift in the reverse. And if we're going to the right, then this is in the forward direction. But I do like the K versus Q to kind of help you determine which direction your reaction will proceed. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this example and comparing uh, K and Q. Oh, at the bottom, I don't have it on here, it says if you compare K 
2K2Q your greater than or less than sign tells you the direction. It will shift. Okay, so in this example, uh, it says for the synthesis of ammonia, the value of K is 6 times 10 to the negative second at 500 degrees Celsius. In an experiment, 0 0.50 moles of nitrogen and 1.0 times 10 to the negative second moles of hydrogen and 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of ammonia are mixed at 500 degrees Celsius in a one liter flask. In which direction will the system proceed to reach equilibrium? So here is our balanced equation for the synthesis of ammonia. One mole of nitrogen, three moles of hydrogen, form two moles of ammonia. And pulling the uh, moles from the problem, I have those that just appeared here, and since it's in a one liter flask, um, the concentration is gonna be equal to the moles. So what we need to do is we need to calculate Q. Um, we are given K in our problem. So Q, we have our products are NH3 and we have two moles of that. So still just like with Q, you're gonna raise it to the coefficient in your balanced equation divided by the concentration of nitrogen. And these are the initial concentrations. I'm just gonna put I here. One mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen. So now I'm going to plug in these values into the Q expression. So 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth and we are going to square this and then divide by 0 0.50 times 0 0.010 and cube this. And when we solve that we should get 0 0.020 for our Q. So now I'm going to take a look at K. Um, K is 6 times 10 to the negative second and Q we found to be 0 0.02. Um, so this is 0 0.06 and this is 2. 0 0.0 times 10 to the negative second. So just kind of looking at that helps me to see um, it a little bit more clearly. So K is bigger than Q. So K is greater than Q. So this means that my reaction is going to shift to the right or the forward direction. Um, so since K is greater than Q, the reaction will shift to the right in order to reach equilibrium. So um, that is it for section 13.5. Uh, then we will get into solving equilibrium problems in the next video. Thanks. Have a great day.